Now, if you've ever gotten an email from a client saying that their form isn't working, you know how awful that feeling is in the pit of your stomach. And you would hope that all those submissions are saved in the database, but even then, it's embarrassing to go back to people who think you've been ignoring them for weeks or even months to try to follow up. This is the kind of problem that could cost your clients hundreds, if not thousands of dollars and really put into jeopardy all the hard work you've done to build your MRR. Now, I would do just about anything to avoid this situation, but who really has the time to go through and check all of your clients' forms manually every week? This is where CheckView comes in. It's an automated testing tool that will go and check all your forms for you, and it's instantly become the most valuable thing I've added to my care plan since I started doing this about eight years ago. In today's video, we're gonna go through the CheckView plugin and show you how you can integrate this with all the most popular form plugins in WordPress, how you can set up different notifications and testing schedules. We'll take a look at the pricing and we'll go through the entire process of getting it all set up. By the end of this video, I think you're gonna agree that this is an absolutely essential part of anyone serious about offering care plans to clients. So let's dig in. So you can see from my CheckView dashboard here that I've already set up some of my own sites just to test this out, but I wanna walk you through that entire process here, which is actually quite simple. So I've set up this demo site where I've added a couple different forms using WS Forms Lite, which is the free version you can get from the repo. CheckView integrates with a lot of different form plugins, but I love WS Forms, so that's what we're gonna use here in this demo. So here on this feedback page, you can see we have a feedback form. And here on this courses page, you can see I have just a typical contact form. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this URL because I know we're gonna need that here in a second. And back in the CheckView dashboard, we'll hit add website and we'll paste in that URL I just copied from my clipboard and hit add website. Now I don't have the CheckView plugin installed so it's gonna tell me that right away. So we'll hop back into my install here and go into the dashboard, plugins, add new, and I'm gonna search for CheckView. Here we'll go ahead and install this plugin and activate it. And now if we go back into the dashboard and check that plugin installation, we'll see that it now successfully connects to the website. So we can go ahead and click this button and go into that website. Now, of course, we don't have any tests set up here. So the first thing we need to do is set up a test flow. So we'll go ahead and click this button. And here we're gonna select WS Forms. It's gonna list any form plugins you have installed on the website. Obviously, I just have the one. Now here from this dropdown, we can select any of our forms that are on the website. We'll just start with this contact us form. And here we can select which URL we want to test that form on. Obviously you might have a form that shows up on multiple pages of your website. And here you can just select which page you want to actually test it on. Next here, we can actually select how often we want these tests to run. So you can select from daily or weekly. Here, we'll just go ahead and go with weekly and we'll test on Mondays at 11 p.m. here in my local time zone. So we'll go ahead and hit save changes and click add test flow. So at this point, it's gonna go through and start setting up our test. It needs to go through and find all the different fields inside of our form and map those to what kind of information needs to go inside of them. Now this process does take a few minutes here. So while we're waiting, let's go ahead and just go to the CheckView website here so we can take a look at some of the details. They just added the WS form support. In fact, it's so recent that they haven't even updated on the website here yet, but you can test WooCommerce, Checkout Forms, Fluent Forms, WP Forms, Ninja Forms, Gravity Forms, Formidable, and Contact Form 7. So these are really all the biggest form plugins in WordPress, so chances are you're using one of these anyways. We'll go down here to their features, and there's a couple really cool things about this setup beyond the fact that it's really gonna save your butt if a form ever fails. So uniquely, it's going through and actually testing this form like a real user would. We'll be able to see a video of that here in a second. It also circumvents wherever you're sending email notifications to. It doesn't send those to you so your inbox doesn't get flooded with different notifications from these form tests. They insert their own email address and check to make sure that those emails hit their inbox properly. That way you know your SMTP is still working. It also scrubs all that information from your database. So you can go through and check out all these different features here, but let's take a look at the pricing. So if I scroll up here and go to the pricing page, we'll see there's three different plans to choose from. You can see kind of the basics up here and there's also a comparison chart further down. But the biggest difference between these plans is how many tests you get. So you can see in the essentials plan, you get 250 tests, 1000 tests in the plus plan and 2000 tests in the advanced plan. Now these are all on Black Friday sale right now. So you're seeing a 35% discount. 
With the Essentials plan, you just have one user that can log in. You get 30 days of test history, and it's only going to test forms, not WooCommerce checkout. So if you have any WooCommerce sites, you're going to want to bump up to the Plus plan. That one is currently $49 a month or about five cents a test. With all of these, you get unlimited websites, but here you can log in with three different users. You get 60 days of test history and you get that WooCommerce support. Now, if you have even more you need to test, you can move up to this advanced plan, which is up to $79, but that brings the per test price down to about four cents. Here you get 10 users, 2000 tests, 90 days of test history, and again, that WooCommerce support. Now you might be wondering exactly how many tests you're gonna need, and that's where this calculator really comes in handy. So let's say you had something like 20 sites. Let's say you just wanna test one form on the website just to make sure that forms are working. Now you might want to test more forms if they're all very important, but for me, I think I can test one form and if that one's working, I can probably safely assume that all the forms on the website are working. You can choose between your test frequency of daily or weekly. Myself, I'll probably be just testing weekly, which is a lot better than the testing I'm doing now. And finally, I don't use WooCommerce, so we'll set this on no. That means I'm only going to run about 80 tests per month and the essentials plan would be fine since we get up to 250 tests. Of course, you're going to want to change these sliders around if you have a lot more sites or you decide you want to change that test frequency to daily. It's going to recommend different plans based on your use case. So this is really handy if you just need to figure out how many tests you're going to need. And when you think about spreading these costs across all of your different care plan websites, it's really just pennies per site, which is almost nothing, but the benefits from it are actually huge. I know I'm gonna be sending out a notification to all my care plan clients, letting them know that this is something I've added to their plan. And once you have something like this, I can't imagine wanting to run a website without having this peace of mind, knowing that all your forms are being submitted successfully. This is a really great way to make your care plan stand out against any of the competition who's probably not doing this. So now we have kind of an idea of the pricing and the features that are included with CheckView. Let's go back and check in on our test. So we can see that this has gone ahead and gone through that process. The status is not running through those tests anymore. So we can click into this test flow and we can see that it was added successfully. We'll go ahead and hit okay here. Now I wanna go ahead and run a manual test because I set this to go ahead and run on Monday. I wanna test it right now just to see exactly what happens. So we'll just click run test and we'll let this go through the process of testing this form. Now it does show you all of this information in real time, which is handy, especially if you have to debug some kind of issue, if everything's not working properly, you can see exactly which step it messed up on. So we can see here, it's gone ahead and loaded in all the steps. These are all the steps that it determined when we set up this form it needed to do in order to successfully test this. So we can see it's just going through and filling in the name fields and the various fields located in this form. But here towards the end, it's actually gonna submit this and it's gonna test to make sure that the email was received in their test inbox. So after just about a minute or so, we can see that everything got a green check mark on here, which means the test was successful. And if we scroll down here, we can actually see a video recording of this test, which did take one minute and seven seconds. So I'll go ahead and hit play on this video here. And we can see as CheckView actually works through this form, it's just filling in first names, last names, email addresses. It's smart enough to know the field type and put the appropriate kind of information in here. Here you can see it's actually putting in that test email address to make sure everything's submitted properly. And it's gonna wrap up by going ahead and submitting that form, which it's doing now. And we can see we got to our success message. So this is a great way to debug if there's any issues. This video will give you some kind of sense. But you'll also have the ability to click into any of these steps and see a screenshot of what it looked like when it was filling in that individual step. There's any JavaScript logs in here and network logs as well. Again, really helpful if you're having to debug any problems. You can also download this HAR file, which you can send to CheckView in case you need any kind of support on a form that's not connecting properly. So if we go back to the website level here, this website is called Repeater. That's why we're seeing that here. We can see all of our test flows here. If we wanted to add another form, we would just go to add test flow. If we click back into this form, we can go into our settings here, which will allow us to edit the schedule or notification. So the schedule we set up when we set up this form, we went ahead and selected a weekly test on Monday at 11 p.m., but the notifications isn't something we looked at. By default, it's gonna use our global notification settings, but we can uncheck this and set up a different set of notification instructions on a form by form basis. So we'll uncheck that box here and we'll turn the enabled to enabled. 
and then we can fill in which email addresses we want to get notifications from when CheckView runs. So by default, it's just going to use the email address you set your account up with. So we can leave this blank and it will go to me directly. But if you had a form where you wanted to send notifications to a specific email address, you could put multiple of those emails in here. Just make sure that you comma separate them. You can also change the frequency of when you get notifications. So by default, it's going to use these global settings, which we'll go look at the global ones here in a second. But you basically get three options. You get an email every time a test fails on this form and then once it passes again, or you can just get a notification one time after a test fails and then once it passes again. Finally, if you just want to make sure you know CheckView is doing its job, you can send a test every time a test fails or passes. So we'll go ahead and select that for this form, although I probably don't want to get that many notifications. Like I said, all of this is going to default to your global settings here, and you can get to those by clicking your account up here and going to organization settings and then to notifications. And we can see here on our test flow notifications that we have those set up to go to my agency's email address and every time a test fails or passes. By default, I think I want to set that to every time a test fails and then once it passes again. So we'll set that as kind of my default notification schedule. Now, since we just ran a test and we had this set to send us a notification every time it passes or fails, we did get this success email in my inbox here. So this is the email you'll get if it passes. It's just going to show you which form on which website and what time the test happened. You can, of course, see all the steps here that passed, and you can click this button here to go to the test. Now, if a test fails, you're going to get a notification as well, showing you that there was a problem with that form test and telling you exactly where that problem came in. Of course, you can then go to your test and start debugging. So back here in CheckView, if we go back to my website, you'll see this new website has been added. It's operational, and we can see the last time it was checked. If we ever want to go in and add new test flows for different forms, all we have to do is click this add test flow and we can go through the process of adding another form on this website. Now, when I sell care plans, I tend to not go through every little line item that's included with the care plan with my clients because I think a lot of it doesn't make sense. While firewalls or plugin updates might be really important, they're not something that means a whole lot to a client. That's kind of left me selling care plans based on my managed hosting services, but with CheckView, I think all of that changes. Clients will instantly see the value of having this kind of system built into my care plan, and if I'm going up against another company who doesn't have this, I'm going to win every time. Now, I'm personally connected with the founder of CheckView, who's an absolutely awesome guy and member of the admin bar community, and I know just how dedicated they are to making sure that this application is perfect for agency owners like us. If you end up giving it a try and run into any issues, reach out to their support, and I know they will go above and beyond to get you all situated. Now, I know it's early on, but with CheckView now available, I don't see how this isn't a mandatory part of care plans going forward. Hopefully you learned something in this video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure to catch the next one, hit subscribe and we'll see you soon.